Clyde lay on his back on the runway, hands folded behind his head, halfway between dreams and the afternoon sun. He entertained the momentary delusion that he'd survived a plane crash and was vaguely unhappy when the dream faded. Crash. Coming into land, he'd slammed into a truck. The driver probably thought the runway was another road. Road. The roads were full of trucks coming and going these days, filling the town with strangers ever since. But he couldn't remember any more of the dream. It was fading quickly and irretrievably, in that uniquely frustrating death of past dreams. Strangers. All the state said they wanted was to knock down some trees, many trees, and build a road tying the small town to the larger web of streets and highways that entombed the rest of the country. Larger web. It would bring in new goods, new people, maybe even some cash from tourism. Many of the residents supported the idea. Residents. But Clyde and his inner circle of stunt pilots turned mail carriers knew that a road would be the end of their secluded paradise. Shop you see us today, Captain. Aye, Captain. Let's reinforce the sails. Yeah, I'd be worried about that, too. Well, and it isn't just the rodents. The floors are mostly rotted, I think. You'd fall right through. I'm surprised they're still standing after last night. All the buildings? No, no, most of them have good bones. It's just these ones the power company built that are rotten. Oh, okay. Yeah, the power company moved in here a while back and set it up like their own little town. For the workers. But they didn't build them too good, huh? It's garbage. They couldn't be bothered. I lived in that one over there, in fact. When I first came here to work at the power plant. Oh yeah? I wouldn't set foot in there now, though. <laughs> Shannon's staring at me. Hey, Shannon. Oh, hi, kitty. Yes, it's a beautiful day. I guess the weather was pretty bad last night, though. You're a chatty one, aren't you? <laughs> sure, whatever you say. All right, well, take it easy. Some of these are really old. Maybe we should open them. <laughs> he says not to open other people's mail, kid. I know what he said. But if they're not even here to open it themselves... I won't tell a soul. Rita tore up weeds. Elmo stood next to her with a bucket. She passed him the uprooted weeds, and he stuffed them in the bucket. 
They worked this way for a few hours. Dark clouds drifted slowly closer, but wouldn't arrive until evening. Weeds. Rita and Almo left to get some tea. The bucket of weeds sat warming in the sun. The dandelions wilted and the clover dried. Some wayward insects continued to eat. Warming. When Rita and Elmo returned, they assumed the same roles and continued working. Roles. The garden was coming along as well as I could hope, given months of neglect. When the plant shut down, the company abruptly pulled out of the area and took a large part of the town's population with it. This included the Carver family, who had tended this garden, the largest and most productive in town, for years. Neglect. Rita and Alma worked until it started to rain. The rain washed their sweat into the dirt. Until finally it just gave way. But you did good work. It's not your fault. They didn't let you finish. That's all. If they let you finish. Ah, oh, forget about it. This place would be dry as a bone. You always did good work. It's a memorial. Hey, they finally woke up. She really is a beautiful dog. Beautiful? Of course. She just needs a bath and a back seat to nap on. Don't you, girl? Yeah, I'm sure she cleans up all right. What do you think, Blue? You want to go ride with this nice lady for a while? Oh, where does Blue go? Do they want to stay with us or go with Maya? I think they're going to stay with us. Blue lays down next to Shannon. Did you say you'll return to Chicago now? Eventually. I was thinking I'd just drive for a while. I've had enough driving. Yeah, all night you said, right? Hey, look what I found. What is that? An animal bone? It's a pipe, I think. Super ancient. It's probably a thousand years old. The people who made these mounds, they used to carve these. It's beautiful, right? This big mound. Most of these ancient earthworks are thought to be burial mounds, but this one definitely isn't. To be honest, I don't know what it was for.
Look at this place. The library. Oh, what a mess. I feel like I should give you a tour, but let's skip to the good part. Any questions? Was it for people or animals? People, at first. A group of utopian social experimenters. They kept their books here, and I think it was kind of the heart of their community. My friend Bert says the work of history is to find a pattern in the unasked questions. In the evening, when the Chinese wall was finished, where did the Masons go? You'd fit right in here. Sure, it's a mess right now, but there's some residual energy from those fearless experimenters that I don't think will ever dissipate. I don't think I'd want to live in a place like this. Junebug and Johnny walk up. Johnny to Ezra. What's good, little dude? We were talking about the library. Is this your family? <laughs> I get to choose who looks at who. Uh... Ezra looks at Johnny. What do you say, kid? Yeah, that's right. This is my family now. Ron duck a grave. Oh, wait, there was something still over here. Hey, this book's in pretty good shape. The City of Ladies. Interesting. No, I've never read it either. Good question. Let's take a look. Here we go. Minerva, Circe, Sappho... And some ladies from the Bible. I think they all get together and build a city. Sounds nice. I'll get us a bus ticket, huh? But before that, it was the company store. What kind of stuff did they stock? Never enough of what you wanted. Eventually we had to start a garden. Oh yeah, I saw that. I wonder if we could get it started again. Yeah, it's in rough shape. Well, this place has been through worse. Back before the power company pulled out, I was in fear of my life half the time. Well, I know I'm not sticking around. You think you'll do anything with this place? We'll think of something. What are the acoustics like? Are we making origami? 3A, lay paper flat. 3B, bring bottom left corner up to the top right corner. 3C, crease with firm steady pressure along diagonal fold. Pressure. Nikki applied only gentle pressure. Looser flowers felt more alive. She rolled her wrists. It was the sixth hour of her assigned company store shift and she'd made dozens of flowers. 
Ron had bought a bouquet and cleaned out their stock that afternoon. Flowers. Repeat steps 4A-7 for each petal, taking care not to rip the filaments from step 9. Filaments. She imagined the insects that would pollinate paper flowers. Watercolor bees, or wasps that left ink stains when they stung. Stung. A commotion outside caught Nikki's attention. Men yelling, blows landing. She put down her work and stepped out just in time to see the crowd disperse. Something brown scurries up the side of the tree. A squirrel? Too fast to tell. Clyde and Cass sat cross-legged in the shade of a light aircraft, Cass shuffling cards and Clyde absently flipping through a stack of unopened letters. Cards. Cass played cards and told fortunes with the same deck. Sometimes she'd switch it up mid-game or mid-divination, until you never knew whether you were winning or losing, or if good luck in the game might mean bad luck in some other part of your life. fortunes. She'd predicted the decline of the circus, of course, and of course nobody had believed her. Decline. Demand for aerial stunts having faded almost completely, and many of their company having died or aged out of the profession, Clyde and Cass found for their remaining pilots a steady flow of contract work delivering mail to remote rural areas. But this place was abandoned place. Cass's cards predicted they'd be here for quite a while. Some more stuff has been moved in here. Well, I'll be damned. Looks like they did almost get it fixed. And Rita never got as many bands to come up here as she would have liked, I think. But it was always a blast. Sure. How does anybody find this place without any roads coming in? Oh, they come up through the well, from the river. Like you did. If they can find it. That's the hardest thing about keeping an artistic community alive. Just getting people to show up. Whoa, look at this. Emily pulls a piece of slate adorned with a partial circuit diagram out of the rubble. This is part of James' schematic for the sand and image processor. Damn, this was valuable information. Emily pulls a broken projector out of the rubble. Elmo's projector! Ah, oh, it's ruined. Poor Elmo. He'll be devastated. Nah, you'll be cool with it. Takes a lot to perturb that guy. I think the ceremony's around dusk. Ceremony? Oh, right, the horses. Uh, sorry, the neighbors. Wow. 
Where are you flying to? Flying? <laughs> I'm just checking to see if everything's working okay. You could fly her somewhere if you wanted to though, right? Of course. So why don't you? Here we go. Keep your distance now. Are they actually going? Uh, I think you're gonna have to go faster than that. I don't think you're gonna take off at that speed. <laughs> uh, uh, you're gonna hit the mail. She watched him. She. She stood in her own shadow. A few deer hunters and talkers walked past but said nothing to the seer. Didn't even look. She studied the path. Path. This was the path the seer had found in her scrying game. A series of private dice rolls and inscrutable diagrams game. The community trusted this game. It had led them to the fish-filled streams, intimate knowledge of the elements in the stars, even here to the cenote? Cenote? Settlement? They trusted it without understanding it, and now the game had revealed to the seer this vital route, which would lead them to safety before the next floods came. Route. At the end of the route, She'd seen a safe, quiet place. Caverns of leathery black birds. A lake of eyeless fish. A towering flame. Place. Now the diver walked the mounds, memorizing the route. He was almost ready. I even lived in there for a bit. No way. Yeah. Too drafty. I moved out one winter and never looked back. Think it's cold? Sure, when the sun's down. Nice old church, though. Really nice. Could make a nice workshop. There you go. All right, man. Let's see what you got. This one looks like it might still play. Oh, Bill Monroe. Great. Yeah, we had a few of his. Man, this is a barnstormer. Popular? They used to be. But then the jukebox started to wear down. The longer it would run, the slower it would play. And then these weird echoes would start to come in. Like the music was leaking and just pooling up in the bottom somewhere until everything was drowning. After a few hours, no matter what you put in that jukebox, it had come out strange. Wrong. I don't know, that sounds pretty cool to me, man.
six feet. That's the standard, standard for people anyway, but... Six feet's the rule for a person, and let's say the average person is five foot nine. The neighbors were about 15 hands, so that's pretty close. Well, at least I'm putting the math in. If this were still company property, they'd be off to a landfill. Cold sons of bitches. If those greedy sons of bitches had finished that drainage ditch when they were supposed to. Well, I should put some of that bile into digging these holes. Ah, oh, damn. There he goes. Can we go in after him? In the bushes? Yeah. After the raccoon? Yeah. No. But... It's probably full of thorns. Yeah, but... Raccoon! It's not happening. Okay, okay. Oh, don't pout. I tell you what. If that raccoon comes back into town, we'll leave some food out for him. Yes, ma'am. Hey! Hey, don't run in the graveyard! Why not? They're kind of stuck on each other. <laughs> Oops. It's... People are trying to rest. Agreed. See that huge bird shadow that goes over the land every once in a while? Wow. Seems to be working okay. Julian's gonna love this. Who? Yeah, it's amazing. I really like this knife. It has an aura. Know what I mean? An aura. Yeah, like it wasn't exactly used to cut apples. It's meant for greater things. Yes, ma'am. Wanda, into tape recorder. Part 4, subsection G, Notes on Inhabitants. Most have relocated already, prior to the transitional event. And <laughs> Shannon, Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, right? I can spy you easy now. I'm making a survey of the site for potential reclamation. Initial results are promising. I think this may be the moment we finally reclaim this ghost town. What does it mean to reclaim a place? The Bureau of Reclamation. It sounds like a good thing the way Shannon's reacting to it, though.
Hey, y'all. Thanks for sticking around for this. I know we've all got places to... Uh, well, if anybody still needs somewhere to go, be sure and speak up, okay? I think Ron's heading through the woods tonight. Back to the road, if you want a caravan. You staying, M? Nah, I'm heading out too. We're gonna help James move the image processor to a safe place on the river somewhere. For right now, though, we've got some friends to bury. The neighbors. Nikki has a poem, and I have a song. If anyone wants to say anything, though, um, I'll go first. The neighbors were kind, gentle, beautiful horses. I used to go on walks with the silver one out in the woods by... Why didn't anybody ever give them names? The silver one. Well, I guess he was gray, but his coat looked silver in the light, so I always called him that in my head. And the other one is the other one. And I love these horses. But you'd never know it if you heard me talk about them like that. So, I'm sorry, silver one and other one. Sorry I don't have better names for you. You deserve better names. Also, sorry I'm so bad at this. Anybody else have anything to say? Ron, I've got something to say. I just want to say, these horses used to crap on my floors, but it never bothered me too much. I never mentioned it to anyone. I didn't want to make a thing out of it. But for Clearing the air, well, that happened, and it's okay. I mean, recently, too. I was cleaning up horse crap just a couple days ago, but I'm saying it was okay. It would have been okay if any of you wanted to crap on my floors. I just want to say that. I would have cleaned up after any of you if you crapped on my floor. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Rita. We didn't give them names because their names weren't ours to give. The horses were here before us, you know. They came with the people from Central America. You know, the utopians. The people of nothing. The people of nothing arrived by horseback in October, and their first experiment was to free the horses. That was generations ago, of people and horses. I don't know when we started calling them the neighbors. We should have called them... The people, I think. They were the only consistent residents of this place for over a hundred years. And now they're all gone. Who are the people now? Okay, I guess we'd better move on. Uh, Nikki, you ready? Thanks for sticking around, like Emily said. It's so good to have you all here for this. I think the neighbors would have liked this. All of us gathered here. They like to be around people. Maya, you and our other visitors might not know about the out-of-towner. He came here to work for the company, to dig a ditch. And the company worked him good and hard, and for less than he was worth. But it wasn't enough. They had to use him up completely. After that, we became ungovernable. First out of shame, then grief, then anger. This is a poem for the neighbors, but it's also for this town. Yeah. We're going to bury this town today, when we bury these horses. It's the same thing. We're going to bury these horses. And what do you think will happen next? We'll all walk out into the woods and leave this place empty. 
Uh, no, I guess some of us might stay and build again. That's all right. It couldn't be me, but to try is your birthright. If you do stay, you'll be building on top of a grave. But that's true anywhere. The whole world is built on top of graves. Look for me under your boot soles, as the fella says. Nikki clears her throat and begins reading from the paper she's holding. <clears throat> we all leave town and call that town a ghost. What ghosts gave this town breath and made it home? And now that breath is gone, we buried it here. What's left is not a ghost. It's just the bones. Nikki's hands tremble a bit as she reads from the paper. Our neighbors were the best of us, of course. It's always so. Our better selves, clearer of ourselves, where we can see their glory glow. They glow now underground, our friends, with love. Our neighbors left us here, though not alone. Where friends have gone, we hope one day to go. In distant valleys, home to better friends. May yet some day a new and hale grass grow. Then we buried the horses. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies so bright. Where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, dear, the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Just sing in praises all day long. I'm going that way. Well, glorious news I tell and sing as onward I go. For those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know. I want them to sing that praise above some beautiful day. For glory to Him who died for me, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. Oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he'll say. While trusting my soul and deem in love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, dear, the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to Just sing praises all day long. I'm going that way.
God, that was such a beautiful scene. So, that is the end of Kentucky Route Zero. It feels weird that it's actually over. The first part of the game was released on January 7th, 2013. So, this thing has been in development for more than seven years by Cardboard Computer. It's such a long time to be working on something. It took me years to actually finish it. I last played it about two years ago. I don't know, when something's been going on for that long, it just feels odd when it's finally over. Let's finish up with some thoughts on Kentucky Route Zero. I feel like anything I could say would pale in comparison to what I actually feel about this series. So, I don't know, let's try this. I'll just talk about what I feel after finally finishing the game. I feel a weird sort of hollow sadness, both for the people and creatures inside of the game and also just that weird hollow sad feeling I get whenever I've been reading or, or watching or playing any sort of media that really affected me and has been going on for a long time, something that's been a big part of my life, and when it finally completely ends, it always feels very empty and sad feel sad thinking of that haunted town wrecked by the power company. And I feel really bad for what happened with Conway. We never saw it happen directly, but we didn't need to. I want to know what Blue's going to do. Probably stay with Shannon for the rest of their life? I want to know what's going to happen with everybody. At that point, it's really like the adventure's done. They've delivered the thing. And after that, some want to stay and try to rebuild the town. Some want to just go. A lot of people just searching for what to do with their life now. And it's not all bad and depressing. A lot of people there were looking at all these shops and buildings and seeing potential. How are the acoustics in there? Oh, that'll be a good workshop. Thinking of how to rebuild, and not rebuild the same as before, but just build a new town from the bones of the old one. So that has been Kentucky Route Zero. Thank you for watching.